Hello, this is Jordan Reina. I'm doing my case study for um, Ed 461. Uh, my professor is Sandra Benitez, and we are from Brigham Young University, Idaho. This is the Reading in the Content Area case study. My student that I did the case study on was Brooke Parkinson. Uh, Brooke is in the 8th grade. She has previously lived in Hawaii and California. Um, I found this fact interesting because I feel like while I haven't lived in those states before, I've visited both of them and they have a very laid-back lifestyle and that's exactly how Brooke is. She's very calm and pretty quiet uh, most of the time and she's just a pretty chill person. She's not usually the first to jump to anything, but um, she'll do it if she needs to. So I found that interesting. Um, Brooke has six siblings. At least I think she does. Um, when I asked her this, at first she said six, and then she changed it to eight, and she said that she counted a couple of friends. So I'm assuming that the six part was the actual fact. She has four cats and one dog. Um, Brooke loves coloring and she loves listening to music. Um, as I mentioned before, um, Brooke is pretty quiet at first and then as soon as she feels comfortable, she'll talk, 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 talk. And it's not necessarily out of turn or anything bad. She just, um, like she's not afraid to say anything, which at first you think that she is pretty shy. Um, she's not one to take charge, so if you ask the class to get up and do something. She's not the first person to get up. Um, she's kind of a follower in that sense. And if you have her working um, in a group with other students, she I, she's aware of what's going on and she can help. She's just not usually one to offer up information unless she's specifically asked. So sometimes that leaves other people to do the work. Um, which we try to avoid, but sometimes it just happens when you're working in groups. Um, Macy is her best friend. She's one of the um, friends that she counted as a sibling. She was in that class, and so after the first day, um, we learned that they could not sit together, and even then, they'll still find a way to talk. But yes, Macy is very... Um, chatty so her and Brooke uh, balance each other out well and I think she kind of brings a lot out of Brooke like Brooke gets a little louder and more talkative when Macy's around okay so my first episode so in the beginning we just wanted to get to know the students a little bit better and I usually at least for these three different episodes I like to start my lessons like that because this was the first times that we had seen these students and just observing you don't get to know things about them you can really only observe like personality traits and so I like to start each of my lessons like this um, but to do that we just we started as teachers um, introducing ourselves saying where we're from and then we said a fun fact about ourselves and then we had each student do that so we just got to know a little bit. Some fun facts were not very helpful, like someone said, I'm tired. Actually, I think a few people said that. Um, so, yeah, some were not as helpful as others, but it was a goal we had at the beginning. Um, something else, um, we wanted, so we started with the shark video, and we wanted students to predict how sharks can relate to math. So the video didn't say specifically, it had some numbers in there, but um, it was just a video on this, on these big sharks. So we had students predict that and ask them how they could relate it. Um, as we gave the directions, either written down or verbally, we asked students if they understood those. So we had them question, you know, their understanding after reading it, if they were able to understand and follow the directions. Um, just to make sure that they were comprehending the text, so to speak. Um, and then one of our main um, math, I guess, goals was to have students understand proportions. So we wanted them to learn what a scale factor is and how it's used. 
Um, so how we take an object and we stretch it in every direction by that scale factor and how that creates a new object or image or whatever it may be. And then we wanted them to learn what happens to the area and what happens to the volume of an object when you use that scale factor. Um, so we had this belly of the beast activity, which is where they were using the sharks. That's why we had the video. So they had to start with a small shark that they drew, and then they had to stretch it by, I think it was a factor of three or two, in um, uh, horizontally and vertically. And then they had to measure the area and things like that. So the results from this, so Brooke, um, Brooke was engaged the majority of the time, as you can see in the photo down here. Um, that's what she looked like majority of the class, but obviously not always. Um, this was day one, so she was sitting by Macy. We were unaware that they were um, best friends at this time. So they did, they were a little bit chatty, and as you can see, um, well, it might be cut off, but on number eight down here, this was her assessment, and she didn't write anything. That's why I wrote that the skill factor was eight, but she didn't even get to that. And it looks like she didn't do number six either. So I think um, that's just getting distracted because she already had the information for this. She just didn't write it down. Um, so she didn't understand um, the area or how the area and volume were affected using the scale factor, as you can see on number seven and eight of her assessment. Um, and a lot of kids found that confusing. And some students asked questions and we were happy to try and lead them to that answer, but um, every time we talked to Brooke, she was like, nope, I'm good, and she said that she knew what she was doing, so we didn't want to um, step in her way and take over that. Um, Brooke colored her shark, which is fine, um, as you can see in the top left, how it's pink and purple and stuff. Um, like, as I said, she loves to color, but I think that was... Um, a little distracting. I don't even know where those colored pencils came from. Um, and then one of the last things I wanted to point out. So in the beginning when we asked for fun facts, Brooke introduced herself and she said something along the lines of, my name is Brooke and I'm not having a very good day. And so that was hard to hear. I mean, we had been in the room maybe five minutes and it was just sad. And we obviously didn't know why and didn't pressure her. Um, and we tried to say we were going to make her day better, but not everyone loves math like we do, so I'm not sure if that happened. But um, someone said it was because she's wearing pink pants. So I don't know if she was being made fun of at school that day for her pink pants or what was going on there, but I think that could have resulted in uh, Brooke being a little distracted from the lesson. So changes that I would make to this lesson... Um, I'd make sure that Brooke is not sitting next to Macy, and also I would prepare the students in a way such that the assessment could be done 100% on their own. As I said, we had to help students a lot with the skill factor part and the, like, how it affects the volume and stuff. So I would have had a more clear example in the beginning. Um, a lot of the students were sharing irrelevant stories about sharks in Hawaii and things like that, and I needed to create an environment where that kind of thing didn't happen. Um, oh, I should have had the lesson plan so that students were up and moving because they were in their desks the whole time. I think that can be hard on the students. I know when I sit at my desk for a whole straight hour, I kind of lose interest partway through. Um, also, I should have taken away the colored pencils from Brooke. I didn't even notice that they were there, so that was not good. Okay, episode two. So, again, we wanted to learn about the families, and then our goal was to teach them how to budget, what it is, how to use it, etc. So, we started out, and the students wrote down how many siblings they had, pets, what their dream house would be, etc. And this was, you know, we wanted to figure out how this would relate into their budget. So, if you have four siblings, and you're going to need, you know, five bedrooms or whatever. Um, and then they had this dream house project, and so we had them, like, eliminate certain things to pay for emergency situations. Or we had them, like, find ways to save up money um, for, for the budget. So the results of this lesson, um, so they presented their hobby room to the class. Um, and I didn't mention this in the plan, but um, 
this was one of our ways of getting to know them too. Um, so we learned about their hobbies. Brooke was, she had a music room, which is how I know that she's interested in music. She just wanted, um, you know, speakers. She can plug in her iPod or a piano or anything like that. Um, everyone seemed like they understood this well. They were able to eliminate and exchange items, and they were also find ways to save up money. So as you can see, um, mostly like working, um, move pipes, work the farm, and then also selling some things. So my original intention when I thought of this plan was to have students um, say things like, and I think I talk about this in the changes, but say things like, oh, we'll make sure that the TV is off when no one is watching it, or we'll take faster showers so that we don't use as much water, things like that, so you could save money on your bills like over time, but I didn't make that very clear. So my changes, um, it says this at the bottom, but I'd have a better example so they could see um, exactly what I was expecting from them. Um, students are a little worn out on the house project. This had been going on for a few days and I think it was pretty repetitive. And so if I had known how worn out they were, I would have changed it entirely. Um, I still would have kept the budget idea because I liked that, but I think I would have scratched the house and just gone something else. Um, again, have my students up and moving more. And then have more targets for this lesson. Um, Instructional plan three, or episode three, um, again, have students learn more about each other. Um, so this was basically a review day, so just reviewing the different topics that we have learned. Um, I wanted to make my fun and keep my students engaged. Um, some problems were a step or two ahead of what they had been taught, but I knew that if they could think about the old information that they had learned, they would be able to connect it to this new information and solve it. Um, so students had to tell their partner one thing about them that they didn't know. Uh, the review game was the amazing math race. They had different stations they had to go to, and they were in teams. Um, ideally, they would be up and moving, so they would go to the station, work there, then report to me, then go find another one, etc. Um, and they played a little math game at the end. So they did a review. I felt like that was successful. Um, the only thing is it felt like there was pretty much one person in each group doing the math and the other ones were just there to either calculate the numbers or write things down or report to me. Um, and then also I lost focus at the end of class and I learned that the last week of school is hard for students to focus even if you try to make it fun for them. Um, so in the beginning I had the desks pushed aside for a reason because they were going to be up and moving so I was like oh they're going to be in the desks for about three minutes and that's it. However, they didn't really want to move, so they were there the whole time. So the desks were scattered kind of crazily. And I should have partway through just moved them back to normal and still had them sit in it. But I didn't think of that. Um, specific outcomes should have been written on the board. Um, Brother Benitez and I talked about this in our meeting. Instead of just saying students will review, I should have said what they will review. Um, again, plan another specific activity for the end because they played COG 10, but I kind of lost them. Um, I didn't start with my expectations because I had been there twice, but I think I should have done that again. And then I would have had, um, roles that students rotated, so each station maybe they swap being the recorder and the reporter, so the recorder being the one who solves the problem and the reporter obviously reports it to me. Okay, so personal reflection. I have about a minute and 20 seconds before my video is going to cut off. Um, I don't like teaching how it is right now. I'm excited to be like a real full-time teacher, but jumping in for a day, teaching to a camera, teaching to an audience to be graded is not fun for me. I can't show my excitement. I can't be my true self and let my true color shine. And so I cannot wait for that to be over. Um, I need to practice my with itness because I don't notice things that are happening behind me when I'm helping students. Um, I hope that student teaching will be better, but it is a question that I have. It's really hard to learn about a student when you're in and out, you know, once every three weeks or so. I found that hard to learn more about Brooke. Um, advice, I think, um, just relax and have fun. I get stressed behind a camera and when teachers are watching me and stuff, but I think the more relaxed and the more fun you have with the students, the more they'll, uh, respond to you, and I think that it usually goes better. Um, one last thing, I used to feel good after I taught. I used to feel like I was doing really well, but after Ed 361, I 
just got ridiculed every time. And so now I never know if I'm doing well or not. So yeah, that's, 